Man, oh man, if you if you guys are not watching NXT right now, you are missing the very best WWE product that they have on their TV schedule for the week, man. This this is amazing stuff. You know, it, it, it's, it's so funny how I watch NXT and you notice the vast difference between NXT and the main roster. And if you're like me with a wandering mind, with a creative mind, just a little bit of what we see in NXT just sprinkled on the main roster would be absolutely fantastic. And I look at NXT and it's the picture perfect way to run a wrestling promotion. And it's so funny that it's got a WWE budget, they're on a WWE payroll, and it's a WWE product. It's crazy. It's just so crazy. And I'm going to try to get through the best, uh, do the best that I can to get through this review. I felt like shit all day. Uh, I've been couch ridden. I don't sound good at all. Uh, I don't feel good at all. I don't know if I, uh, I have the flu, but I've had cold sweats and the chills and, you know, I've been in aches and pains for the majority of the day. NXT was the one bright spot today, man. Unbelievable show tonight. I am so excited about what is to come for WrestleMania weekend. WrestleMania typically for me is one of those shows that I don't look forward to during the year. To me, WrestleMania may be the biggest show of the year, but most of the time, especially the last couple of years, it's been the worst show that WWE has presented us. This year, with a stacked WrestleMania card, there's no way that that show is going to be bad. And then with NXT TakeOver New Orleans, which I'm telling you right now, with what was announced tonight, with what was confirmed tonight, this is going to be the best TakeOver of all time. Of all time. Mark my words, by the end of that night, when we're sitting here reviewing that show, and we're all excited and we're all drugged up with adrenaline because of NXT TakeOver New Orleans, I'm going to be sitting right here and telling you that was the best TakeOver show that they ever produced. I can't wait for WrestleMania weekend, man. Tonight, tonight, we finally got the confirmation of Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa at NXT TakeOver New Orleans. Now, a lot of you guys brought to my attention that Johnny Gargano had a WWE.com exclusive where he was waiting outside the Performance Center and he started to chase Tommaso Ciampa around on foot while Ciampa was driving his vehicle. So I have the sound clip of that. We're going to go in chronological order here from the last week and a half. Johnny Gargano tries to chase down Tommaso Ciampa while waiting for him outside the Performance Center. He's going to be met by heavy machinery. You're going to hear them in the background. And then you're going to hear Johnny Gargano utter the words, well, he has to come out sometime. This is the clip from WWE.com, an exclusive in the story of Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Oh, yet again! <laughs> Serious sweat <laughs> sesh, Tucky. We're ready for the next time. Oh, you damn right we're ready. I to get my hands on Riddick Moss. Oh, he yes. We owe him one big time. Especially, yeah. Tucky, it's bulking oh, season! Yes. You know what I'm saying? We are in the middle. Tell I'm me something. Bulking. Before I even continue, tell me something. Am I the only one who thinks of Chris Farley when I look at Otis Dolcevic? Does, does, does anybody get that Chris Farley vibe? A classic Chris Far Tommy Boy Chris Farley with Otis my God, man, he is hilarious. He is absolutely hilarious. In cycle, we've been cultivating some serious mass. Tucky! What's up? It's Johnny. It's Johnny. What's he doing? It's Johnny, you ask him. Johnny, where you going? Tomaso's got to show up eventually. Tomaso's got to show up eventually. Come on, man, you don't want to wait. And here he is, like, he starts running. Get out of here, we're going to get... Johnny! 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 Johnny. Door. Easy. No, 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 no. Jumping and have his doors locked. Oh, God. <laughs> floor, jumping floor. and have his doors locked. Gargano opens the door. Oh, Shut up. Jump up. Speed away. He runs a, he runs a stop ahead. sign. And then Johnny in the distance as Tommaso Ciampa is driving off. You can't run forever. So then we get to today... And Tommaso Ciampa posts something on his, on his Twitter wall, 
And it's a Twitter video at 3.30 in the morning hyping this storyline through social media. Listen to this. This, this is what my life is going to. Oh, you hear that, yeah? Come on, open the door. I'm not going crazy, right? You freaking hear it? 3 a.m. in the morning, man. Johnny Gargano at 3.30 in the morning banging on Tommaso Ciampa's home door. He shows up. He shows up at my place of work. Yeah, he puts his hands on me. Oh, he comes to my physical therapy. This is like, yeah, this is the third time in two, third time in two weeks that he's been in my house. Look at it. 3.25 in the morning. I hear you. I hear you. I could call the cops. I could. It's not going to make a difference. I know him. There's one, one person you have to get through to him. And I can't believe I'm even saying this. Regal, I don't know if you've seen this. Yeah, tonight, we're going to have some words. <laughs> you won't give up, man. I love it. I think it's fantastic, man. That's the proper way to use social media to build up a feud. That is the proper way to use social media to build up a blood feud between two guys that are just going to tear the house down in New Orleans. Now, the start of the show, seeing Tommaso Ciampa walking through the parking lot of Full Sail University. He's being asked questions by reporters. He's ignoring everybody. How you, how's your knee? How you feeling? How's the rehabilitation? Whatever. Ignores everybody. People are filming him. People got microphones in his faces. He ignores everybody. He sees William Regal further ahead. He speed walks up to William Regal. Just the guy I want to talk to. How can you allow Johnny Gargano to enter the arena, put his hands on me? He doesn't even work here. He's putting his hands on the employees. He's terminated. You know, the only person that I can go to to do something about this is you. What are you going to do about Johnny Gargano being out of line. What do I have to do to get rid of this guy permanently? William Regal agreed with him. William Regal said, listen, Johnny Gargano's been out of line. There's, you know, there's things that we could do, and this is going to fall all on you. I'm going to come up with a solution. At NXT TakeOver New Orleans, it's going to be Tommaso Ciampa returning to the ring for the first time in almost eight months versus Johnny Gargano. And this match is going to have to be non-sanctioned because Johnny Gargano does not work here anymore. He's no longer an employee of NXT. And William Regal did give the stipulation. If Johnny Gargano wins, he gets his job back at NXT. Johnny Gargano loses, he's fired forever. There's no coming back to NXT. That is a very interesting stipulation for this match. Two things I want to mention. Number one, I can't wait to see the match. I absolutely can't wait to see the match. This is what we've been wanting. When Johnny Gargano didn't win the NXT Championship in Philadelphia, we all knew that this was the this was the eventual route that they were going to go. Do I think that they could hold the feud off until NXT TakeOver in Chicago, Money in the Bank weekend? Do I think it would give it more intensity, more fire? Yes, I do. I wish they would have prolonged it just a couple of more months. That is what my heart is saying. What my mind is saying is I can't wait to see these fucking guys literally steal the whole weekend. There's two matches on that show at TakeOver that could potentially steal the whole weekend. That non-sanctioned match with Gargano and Ciampa and that six-man ladder match, which we're going to talk about in a second. You know, I want to see it, but I think WWE could have, if they wanted to, let this linger a little bit longer and just have it just culminate in Chicago where the original split of DIY actually happened. That's the way I'm feeling internally, but my mind is like, I want to see these fucking guys steal the show in New Orleans, man. Going to be one of the best matches all weekend, and that's a big weekend for matches, man. You got Omega versus Cody Rhodes. You got uh, the Young Bucks in a ladder match at Supercard of Honor, which was just announced. You got Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano, Aleister Black versus Andrade Cien Almas, that North American Championship match, plus everything that's going to be happening at WrestleMania with Nakamura and AJ Styles. 
Unbelievable. Daniel Bryan coming back. It's going to be a fucking unreal weekend. One of the most memorable, memorable weekends of all time for professional wrestling in New Orleans that weekend, man. It's going to be unbelievable. The other thing that is very interesting, Johnny Gargano is already a terminated employee of NXT. They don't need to bring him back. The rumor is that Johnny Gargano is going to be making his main roster debut very, very soon. Dave Meltzer actually used the word imminent. It's imminent that Johnny Gargano is going to be on the main roster. Where he lands, we don't know. 205 Live, being that Triple H is now in control of 205 Live, and that show is hitting the strides that it should have been hitting since the Cruiserweight Classic. Do I think Gargano could thrive on 205 Live? Yes. Do I think Johnny Gargano deserves 205 Live? No. Johnny Gargano is too good, and he possesses so much of what Daniel Bryan possesses right now that Johnny Gargano needs to be on Raw or SmackDown. Preferably, I think SmackDown would be better for Johnny Gargano. That's just me. I'm also hearing that Tommaso Ciampa is about to make his main roster debut. This might not even be over. This might not even be over yet. All because Johnny Gargano is terminated in NXT doesn't mean that this is over yet. They could both get drafted. They could both get drafted after WrestleMania, and we still see this continue on the main roster, and we still get five-star classics on the main roster. Who knows? Or Tommaso Ciampa is not promoted to the main roster. Johnny Gargano is. He loses at TakeOver, doesn't get his job back. Shane McMahon doesn't get to WrestleMania or isn't cleared to wrestle because of the diverticulitis, which is a legit story. And Daniel Bryan chooses Johnny Gargano and signs Johnny Gargano for his big WrestleMania debut to be in his corner against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. That's something that we pitched on SmackDown Live Review Tuesday. Nobody else said it. We said it first. That I could see happening. That I could see happening. A lot of people are mentioning Chris Jericho. Jericho is going to be overseas with Fozzie. It's not going to happen. You know, there's nobody else that makes sense but Shane McMahon, who might not even be there. WWE might not, might not clear him. Jericho is unavailable. I think Johnny Gargano would be a perfect asset for Daniel Bryan. What better way to... Go against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens then to team with your mini-me, pretty much. But I love everything that they're doing with this feud. This is fantastic. But in my heart, I'm saying, damn, it could have been even more epic if they waited till Chicago. But at New Orleans, we all want to see it. It's going to make the, the, the show that much more incredible. And I want to see them steal the weekend. So that's my feeling on that. I love the use of social media with, with Tommaso Ciampa. He even tweeted out, just two hours ago, I'm looking at it right now. He's got a black heart next to each tweet here. Chicago, broke your heart. Philly, crushed your spirit. Atlanta, ended your career. New Orleans, good fucking luck. Tommaso Ciampa is using social media, right? Tommaso Ciampa is a stud, and I can't wait to see these two go out at NXT TakeOver New Orleans, man. This is a quintessential, picture-perfect feud. This is the way a feud should be built up, and NXT is doing it right, man. Moving on, the North American Championship announcement. I will not even say anything. I hope I don't get content ID'd for this because of the theme music, but I have it right here. You guys will hear it. If you're wondering what you're, what, what you're hearing, I'll talk about it as soon as the clip is over, man. William Regal announces the NXT North American Championship. NXT is the brand where week in and week out we bring you the very best competitors from around the world. And as NXT continues to grow and expand, it is imperative that we determine the standard bearers, the measuring sticks for what it means to be the very best in various regions around the world. That is why I'm incredibly happy to announce that at NXT TakeOver New Orleans, we will be introducing the NXT North American Championship. Can't wait, man. Wow. Can't wait. <laughs> That's huge. Exactly what NXT needs. The North needed. American Champion will carry that title with pride, continuing the tradition of bringing you the very best competitors from around the I globe. I am in the top 1%.
E C three. Oh wow, we saw him at NXT Takeover Philadelphia. He says he's here to change the game. He's E C three. Before he even speaks, I, I need to say it. Like I don't. I, I, I don't get chills often when I watch professional wrestling. I should. WWE does nothing in, in terms of getting me that excited for a debut for anybody. The last time I got chills was when I seen Johnny Gargano and uh, Andrade Cien Almas and their five-star classic. The, the last time I got chills before that was when I watched Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura at NXT TakeOver Dallas. The last time I got chills before that was Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker at WrestleMania 25. So you can see the span of years it, it, it takes when I get chills. It doesn't happen often. I can genuinely say that when EC3 came out to do his intro and you heard that theme music, which is fucking absolutely beautiful. F- picture perfect for someone like EC3. He comes out dressed sharp as fuck. And he stands with his back towards the ring. And the screen is all black. He points E, C, 3. That shit is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, man. You talk about a stud. E, C, 3 has the makings. And I might be jumping the gun here. Because, you know, everybody's like, oh, look at JD jumping on the bandwagon. This is a TNA talent. Or an Impact talent. Now he's loving him because he's in WWE. Listen. Impact was the minor leagues. Impact is where EC3 got his feet wet. EC3 in Impact was like swimming in a small pond. Just hoping to just leave and jump into the bigger ocean. So that he can show off what he's learned in TNA. This is what NXT is for. This is what WWE is for. They're taking EC3 and whatever was molded in TNA, and they're going to make him into a legit superstar. They're going to make EC3 into a household name. That's what WWE does. They create. First of all, I'm happy that he's keeping the name EC3. It's catchy. It makes sense. It's very marketable. And number two... The way he came out, the way he was dressed, I want anybody to argue with me or try to defend the fact EC3 and his appearance and the way he was marketed in TNA might have looked like a number one guy in that company, but when he came out and he had the theme music and the suit and the cockiness just exuding off his body, he looked not only like a stud, but he looked like a guy that could carry this company on his back. And if you didn't see that in him, you need to open your eyes, man. I wasn't the biggest fan of Impact Wrestling. I wasn't the biggest fan of EC3. With one debut, with one night, he made me think, I can't wait to see what this guy does in NXT, man. That is an impressive debut. He took the microphone and he could have he cut a damn good promo on William Regal, on the North American Championship, and why he is in NXT. I knew you were a kind man when you gave me the call and the opportunity to come to the hottest brand in sports and entertainment, NXT! (laughs) And I knew... Absolutely, of course I did. And I knew you were a reasonable man when you... Rolled out the red carpet, allowing me to strut my stuff. Gave me a very lucrative contract. And I mean, and that banger of a theme song. Did you guys hear that thing? Oh, hey! Yeah, Damn, that shit was fucking straight fire. But Mr. Regal, I did not know you were so logical. To go out of your way and create a brand new championship, the NXT North American Championship, and award it to me on my very first day. You are a very smart man because you know there is only one man capable to be the representation of the greatest region in the entire world, North America. And that man is the best guy here, the best guy there, the best guy anywhere. A literal human money printing machine. That man is EC3.
Damn good, man. Boy, is NXT getting you excited for the future, man. Holy shit. Could you have asked for a better debut? I was I was slightly disappointed because I thought William Regal was going to announce everybody for the North American Championship in the latter match at NXT Takeover. I thought we were going to get I thought we were going to see EC3. I thought we were going to see Ricochet. So when that was over and he finished his promo and we didn't get Ricochet, I was like, Wait, "Where's Ricochet at?" You know, because I know he's going to be part of this thing. But they announced each participant along the way throughout the night, man. Very very good segment for EC3 and his debut on NXT. Andrade Cien Almas attacking Aleister Black tonight. Apparently, none of them were in the building. They were anticipating both Almas and Aleister Black to arrive in the arena. They were not there at the beginning of the show. All of a sudden, Dakota Kai comes out ready for her match, and the cameras cut away to the parking lot, and Aleister Black is getting his ass kicked by Andrade Cien Almas, man. Angry Almas is a good Almas. I'm loving the ferocity. I'm loving the intensity of Andrade Cien Almas. Coming out of his feud with Johnny Gargano, he knows he has an even bigger threat than Aleister Black, and he's stepping up to the plate and showing Aleister Black, listen, I'm not going to be any pushover here, man. But there's one negative about this entire situation that happened tonight. The attack was great. He was beating him up in the parking lot. He dunked his head into a water cooler filled with ice. That is not pretty, and I'm sure that doesn't feel good whatsoever. He dragged him to the arena. He started beating him with a steel chair. Started choking him out with a steel chair. Started cursing at him in Spanish while holding the NXT Championship uh, over his head while he was pinned underneath the steel chair. Very, very good attack. You got Zelina Vega, you know, throwing her two cents in. The one thing about this attack, though, even though it was very well orchestrated, it was very well planned, they might as well just paint the picture. You know, Aleister Black got beat up by Andrade Cien Almas here two weeks before NXT TakeOver, they might as well just paint the picture that even though Aleister Black got his ass kicked, Almas is losing the title at NXT TakeOver. That's all that meant to me. Aleister Black is getting his ass kicked by Andrade Cien Almas going into TakeOver. What is going to happen? Typically, it's wrestling one-on-one. It's pro wrestling one-on-one. The babyface going into this thing, getting beat up week after week. He's going into the pay-per-view against the heel who's got the advantage on him. He's going to beat the heel in, in exact revenge on the heel at the pay-per-view and win the title. So it's pretty much, they might as well put it in headlines, man. Aleister Black wins NXT Championship. Very good attack. It's just, it's very stereotypical of what we've seen, you know, in years prior where the babyface gets beat up going into the pay-per-view and then he ultimately wins the championship. And by the flow of, of, of the nature of things in NXT, it's pretty much Aleister Black's time. You know when it's someone's time in NXT. You know when someone's going to win the NXT Championship. You know when someone is going to be crowned the next guy. Aleister Black is the next guy. This is his moment. It's WrestleMania. It's New Orleans. He's going to win the NXT Championship. Almas might as well be called up. They gave him this token run because A, he deserved it. B, he's probably one of the best wrestlers in the world, never mind on the WWE roster. And it's about time we see his talent with Zelina Vega on the main roster. I'd love to see him on SmackDown Live. I'd love to see Almas versus AJ Styles or Almas versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Almas versus Randy Orton, you know? Matches like that, it's about time we 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 get him to that next level. After Aleister Black, there's really, there really is nobody else for Almas to go up against. Let's get him to that next level. His skill and his character has proved worthy in NXT. Time to take that to the main roster now. That's the way I see it. But other than that, man, those are the big announcements on NXT tonight. Those are the big stories on NXT. We had two Dusty Tag Team Classic matches. We are now at the finals, which will be, you know, next week, quote-unquote. I won't reveal anything, but the finals will be next week. Um, As far as the matches go, Street Profits versus the Authors of Pain. I really wanted the Street Profits and TM61 to shine in this tournament. Clearly, clearly... It's not ending up that way. And I and I wanted this tournament to be a foundation to get other teams over besides the Authors of Pain or besides a mixed team of Pete Dunne and Roderick Strong. It's not something that I really had hoped for. Shri Profits are a very talented team. Montez Ford, fucking gleaming with talent, you know? Dawkins, you put him in that situation where he was pretty much not doing anything before Montez Ford came around. Repackage them at the Street Profits. They got a they got a winning gimmick here. They're, they're a winning team. They're a great looking tag team. Authors of Pain have seen their day. I don't know why WWE continues to push the Authors of Pain when 
they indeed will be called up to the main roster as well. They have more value to the main roster on a Raw, where the tag team division is depleted, than on NXT holding the Shree Profits down. But again, it's all about it's all about timing in professional wrestling, and it's not the Shree Profits' time yet. It's not TM61's time. And there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to get that feud for the tag team championships in NXT when the time is right. Two of the top teams in the brand or on the brand. Shree Profits versus the Altars of Pain. Very quick match, man. You know, Dawkins was doing his thing. Montez Ford seen Dawkins doing his thing, so he started celebrating on the outside with his little sippy cup on the outside, and he was dancing in front of Paul Ellering to a point where Paul Ellering got very agitated, knocked the cup out of his hand, and this led to Ford staring him down. He heads towards the ramp, and Ford starts chasing Ellering up the ramp. From behind, AOP give the last chapter to Dawkins. Meanwhile, Ford was completely out of the match, preoccupied with Paul Ellering. So last chapter to Dawkins, Authors of Pain win. They move on to the finals of the Dusty Tag Team Classic. William Regal backstage, interviewed by Kathy Kelly. She speaks to Regal. Uh, no more Android in NXT. Christy St. Android had her energy depleted. Gone. Good. Kathy Kelly's a lot better looking to look at anyway. Speaks with William Regal and says Adam Cole is going to be in the NXT North American Championship match in the ladder match. Good. Adam Cole, baby, is going to be in the ladder match. Velveteen Dream comes up. Shows up and says that the ladder match sounds great, but it's not quite the experience until he's included in the match. Regal agrees and says that he will be the third competitor. Not only do I agree he should be in the match, I agree that Velveteen Dream should win the NXT North American Championship. In fact, he is my choice going into New Orleans. That's my prediction right now. If you guys want to know, oh, JD, who's going to win the match, man? I'm going with Dream. I think the Dream... Uh, is the perfect candidate for the North American Championship. Plus, having a babyface chase dream for the title, who is a heel, might not seem like it, but he is a heel. Having a ricochet chase dream for the title would make it that much more prestigious. So I'm going with Velveteen Dream instead of the other way around. You're not going to give Ricochet um, his first win be a title match. Lars Sullivan, I don't see him as a North American champion right now. Killian Dane, I don't see a North American champion. Adam Cole is going to go on to bigger and better things. He's going for the NXT title. He's going on for the NXT championship. North American championship, sounds good on Adam Cole. Anything sounds good on Adam Cole. But he's going to get the NXT championship opportunity next. That is my prediction on that. And who's the other one in the match? We got Dream. We got Ricochet. EC3. Again, same thing as Ricochet. You're not going to put the title on EC3's first match on his first night in NXT, man. Give it to Dream. Have, e either, have either EC3 or Ricochet chase Dream for the title. Lars Sullivan versus John Silver. You know, hi-ho Silver. Seems like you could go fucking look for this guy's frozen fish sticks in aisle seven of Stop and Shop, John Silver. Lars Sullivan completely destroyed him. He looked good. Nice to see Lars Sullivan back. It's nice to see his theme music again on the PA. It's nice to headbang to his theme music because he's got catchy fucking theme music. Wins with the freak accident here. Lars Sullivan actually did a flying headbutt off the top rope, adding a new move to his repertoire, man. Very nicely done here. Lars Sullivan causing destruction before the ladder match. I can only imagine what this guy's going to do with a ladder in New Orleans, man. Good stuff there. Kathy Kelly again talks to William Regal. Sullivan walks in and... Regal invites him to be in the ladder match. That sounds fantastic, Mr. Regal. Sullivan says he wants Killian Dane. Well, Killian Dane's going to be in the ladder match. You can beat the shit out of him there. Regal said that Dane will be in the ladder match, so that's five. EC3, Dane, Sullivan, Dream, and Cole. He's even giving Sullivan Killian Dane next week on NXT. Do you see how NXT does things, dude? Do you see how NXT does things right? Sullivan wants Dane. For the ladder match, Regal knows it's going to be chaos. You want him, I'll give him to you. Go ahead. It makes sense. Beat the shit out of him then before the ladder match. Have fun. Beat the shit out of one another. Go ahead. EC3, Dane. You got Sullivan. Velveteen Dream, Adam Cole. Who's the last guy? We all know who the last guy is, but where is he at this point? I want to see Ricochet, man. Dakota Kai comes out making her way to the ring, and that's when Andrade Cien Almas beat the shit out of Aleister Black. Very good beatdown, but it's pretty much, 
you know, a foreshadowing of Aleister Black winning the NXT Championship. In the main event, Sanity, Eric Young and Alice, uh, Alexander Wolfe versus Roderick Strong and Pete Dunne. This is the last semifinal match for the Dusty Classic. We had Roderick Strong and Pete Dunne win in a very physical match. Very good main event. Uh, I enjoyed last week's main event with uh, Chris Hero uh, and Adam Cole a little bit more. Cassius Ono a little bit more. Uh, this was a very physical tag team match, man. And Young with that flying elbow drop, which I'm falling in love with every time I see him do it. Very good looking elbow drop. Flying elbow drop. Cover, kick out. Uh, Eric Young can't believe it on Roderick Strong. Strong continues to fight back. Uh, backbreaker. Uh, he goes for a cover. Wolf breaks it up. Pete Dunn comes in and nearly suplexed. Uh, flips out of it. Kick to the back. Strong with the end of heartache on Wolf. Dunn is tagged in and they hit assisted side suplex for the cover. One, two, three. Pete Dunn and Roderick Strong advance to the finals against the Authors of Pain next week. On NXT, man. Very good match, but that was not it. Where's the last man in this ladder match, bro? Kathy Kelly's backstage. She knocks on William Regal's door. Who's the last participant? So he goes, one moment. I just finalized who the last participant is. He closes his door. The door reopens again. Ricochet comes out in a nice blue, uh, blue suit. He smiles. He winks at Kathy Kelly and says, I'll see you at TakeOver, and then walks away. And then with the faint crowd in the background chanting Ricochet, Ricochet, Ricochet. And NXT went off the air, man. NXT is hitting all the right buttons, bro. This is the best show on WWE Weekly Television. There's nothing but excitement and positivity coming from NXT. For everybody that says I'm so negative about the WWE product, watch me on Wednesdays. You'll barely hear a complaint out of me. And if you do, it's always backed up by some form of positivity. That is your NXT review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. SmackDown Live Review is live on the channel right now. Monday Night Raw Review is live on the channel right now. Follow me on Twitter at JD from NY206. I might have an off the script extra tomorrow. I might, doing so I might do something WrestleMania related. We'll see. Because I want to get something out there for you guys. Um, it all depends on if I feel good. Because right now my voice is shot. And I'm very weak. And I just want to get this review over with. But... Uh, if you guys enjoy this, hit that thumbs up. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 90,000. We're definitely going to hit 90,000 before WrestleMania, man. So let's do it. Thank you guys so much for the support. If you missed anything on the channel, go and check it out. And I'll see you guys possibly tomorrow with more Off The Script Extra. And then Friday, as always, for episode 215 of Off The Script, man. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with more content right here on the channel. I'll talk to you later.